Hello maths fans, Dr Tom Crawford here from the University of Oxford and today we're talking about critical points for functions of two variables. But to start with, let's remind ourselves of critical points for a function of one variable. So if I were to draw the following graph and here I'm thinking of x and here is going to be y is a function of x. So there are several things that can happen here. We could have, for example, a local maximum, maybe there's a local minimum, and then we have the classic point of inflection. Now in all of these cases, the max, the min, and the inflection point, the critical point that we are interested in occurs when the derivative is equal to zero. The gradient of our curve goes flat at the critical point. So here the gradient is positive, it goes through zero flat gradient, and then the gradient becomes negative. Here there's a change from the negative gradient through zero as it goes flat, and then it starts to increase. And then here the gradient continues to increase, but it does pass through zero at the inflection point. So the way to find critical points for a function of one variable is simply to solve f prime of x or df by dx equal to zero. So you differentiate your function and then solve equal to zero to find the location of your critical points. So why don't we try the same for our function of two variables? Find out where its derivative is zero to get the location of the critical point. But the question then becomes, what does it mean for a function of two variables to have zero derivative? Well, for one variable, we can see from our diagram here that when the derivative is zero, the function is not changing in the x direction. The curve is going flat. So in order to understand what this means for a function of two variables, we need to be able to plot functions of two variables. And now because we have x and y as our variables, instead of getting a curve, we will actually get a surface. And so we need to look at a three-dimensional plot of a particular surface, z is equal to f of x, y. You can actually do this with pretty much any function you can come up with using the Maple Calculator app on your phone. It's completely free to use and I do strongly recommend playing around with it to try to get some intuition into the different kinds of surfaces you can create with functions of two variables. All you do is enter z equals your function in terms of x and y and then select 3D plot to see what it looks like. The example I have here is z equals x squared plus 2xy minus y squared plus y cubed. Looking at the 3D plot, we can see that it appears to go flat around the center, and so zero could perhaps be one of our critical points. Remember that for a function of one variable, we said that the function was not changing in the x direction at our critical point. So in two dimensions, what this means is that we need our function to not be changing in the x direction and also to not be changing in the y direction. So that means both the x derivative should be zero so that it's not changing, there is no change in that x direction. And the y derivative should also be zero so that there is no change in my function in the y direction. So this means we actually need to calculate the partial derivatives and set both of them to be zero. Don't worry if you're not familiar with partial differentiation. The key idea is to treat everything else as a constant except the variable that you are differentiating with respect to. So if we take the example of the surface we were just looking at, we had f of xy, was equal to x squared plus 2xy minus y squared plus y 
cubed. Now to calculate the partial derivatives, we want to set both the x partial derivative and the y partial derivative to be zero. This is our idea about what must happen at a critical point. So that means calculating df by dx, where we use a curly d to denote partial derivative. And this just means I want to differentiate this function where x is my variable, because that's the thing I'm interested in working out the rate of change with respect to. And I'm just going to treat the y as though y is a constant. So the first term is x squared, so the derivative of x squared is 2x. So that first term gives me 2x. Then I have 2xy, but remember y is constant. I'm only changing x. I care about the rate of change in the x direction. So y is a constant, so therefore the 2x differentiates to give 2, so I'm left with 2y. I just differentiate out the x. Then I've got minus y squared, that's a function of y. y is a constant, so a constant differentiates to give 0. And then y cubed, also a constant, so that differentiates to give 0. So the x derivative df by dx, partial derivative, is 2x plus 2y. Now I also need to know df by dy, and much in the same way, we are going to differentiate with respect to y, treating x as a constant. So x squared, that's a constant, that differentiates to give 0. Um, then we've got the 2 and the x are both constants. I then have a linear function of y to the power 1, so that differentiates to give me 1. So I just get 2x from that first term involving the y. Then I've got minus y squared. Differentiate with respect to y, that gives me minus 2y. And then I've got y cubed. Differentiated gives me plus 3y squared. So my y derivative, df by dy, is 2x minus 2y plus 3y squared. Again, don't worry if you weren't able to follow those steps, because the Maple Calculator app will actually give you the partial derivatives automatically when you enter your equation. You simply just select x derivative and y derivative from the options, and it will give you the results. Now, we said that at a critical point, both of these derivatives, both of these equations have to be zero. So now we have a set of simultaneous equations, two equations in the two variables x and y, which we need to solve to find the location, the xy coordinates, of our critical point. So the first equation, 2x plus 2y equal to zero, that is going to give us that y is equal to minus x. So we have a relationship between the x and y coordinates. And then our second equation equal to zero. So if we substitute in x in terms of minus y, then what we've got is minus 2y minus another 2, so minus 4y plus 3y squared must be 0. Now this has a common factor of y, so I can rewrite this as y times 3y minus 4 equals 0. And now I can solve this. The two roots of this equation are going to be y equals 0 from here, and then 3y equals 4, so that's y equals 4 thirds. And so x is equal to minus y, it means that when y is naught, x is naught, and when y is 4 thirds, x is minus 4 thirds. So going back to our original equation and our original function of two variables, we found that there are two critical points. We have 0, 0 is a critical point, which was what I originally guessed when looking at the 3D plot. So you can actually gain a lot by just looking at these plots. That's why they are so helpful. 
And our second one has x as minus 4 thirds and y as 4 thirds. So this function here, f of xy is x squared plus 2xy minus y squared plus y cubed. This function of two variables in this particular instance has two critical points at 0, 0 and at minus 4 thirds, 4 thirds. And we found those critical points by solving for the x partial derivative equal to zero and the y partial derivative equal to zero. Because these two equations tell us that at these critical points, our function is not changing in the x direction and it is not changing in the y direction. So that is the equivalent of a turning point on our original y equals f of x graph. Here there is no change in x at any of these locations. And now for our two-dimensional surface, we can see that at these two locations there is no change in the surface. The surface is flat. And that is how we define a critical point of a two-variable function. Now that we know the location of our critical points, the next step is going to be to classify them. So just as we have a maximum, minimum, or an inflection point in the function of one variable case shown here, we can have a maximum, minimum, or what is called a saddle point in the case when you use a function of two variables. So join me in part two of this video when I will go through the method of the discriminant which is used to classify a critical point for a function of two variables. Thank you very much for watching. Please do remember to subscribe if you've enjoyed this video and hopefully I'll see you again soon.